All right, our last step in fixing this uh, multimeter is getting rid of these, uh, getting rid of these Dallas parts. So um, there are a couple YouTubes uh, that talk about replacing uh, these with uh, flash RAM. Um, and so there are a couple people who have done boards and I, I, I decided to use these boards here. Uh, let me show them to you. Uh, they're available on PCBWay. Uh, he has them posted there. Uh, this is from the YouTube channel um, NFM, Near Far Media. Uh, NFM is a great site for electronics and stuff. And uh, these are designed by Chabot. Uh, and um, yeah, so they're just an adapter. So there's two different ones that you need to buy because there's two different versions in the uh, in the machine. There's the Dallas uh, 1220 and the 1230. These are the RAMs and this is the uh, Cal data. Okay, and so you need the two different boards. Um, and this board is just simple. It's pin one to pin one, pin two to pin two. That's just all there is. And you put a, a bypass cap on it, which is nice. Um, so this uh, uses one type of device. And then the other one is shorter, okay? And it is for this. Now, he uses a larger device than this is because that's what's available. You can't buy little ones anymore. But that's okay. He just put pins, the, the upper address lines, he just grounded them. But that runs into trouble though. Once you have it loaded on the board, you can't program it any longer. So you need to program the device before you solder it to the board. Um, so I, I had to do that. But the other one you can just put on and, and, and program it because it's just pin for pin. But this, because this one scrambles up and the programmer looks and it, it can't address those high bits. It just, it just doesn't like it and it gives you an error. Okay, so then you need to buy some flash parts. So these are uh, in the package, so they're hard to read now. Let's see here. Uh, the part number of these is uh, FM. 16W08. The 16W08 is for the 1220. And then these guys are the 18W, get it right here. Uh, yeah, these are the 18W08. So the 16W08 is for the little one, the 18W08 is for the big one. And uh, so I loaded these up. Now, when you put head, pin headers on the boards, do not, do not use uh, these type of headers that everybody's used to because they won't fit in your socket, okay? Especially if you have a pin socket, they just, they won't fit in there. So you need to get yourself some nice uh, round pin uh, sock, uh, long pins. And these, uh, the ones that I have here, they're fat on one end and skinny on the other end. You want to make sure that the skinny end is down because it's the skinny end Okay, it's the skinny end that's gonna go into your socket. The fat end won't fit in your socket, so you have to get these guys the right way around also. So skinny, skinny is to the outside and, and the fat is to the, uh, is to the PC board holes, okay? So uh, I'll show you the uh, parts installed in the machine now. And uh, we're gonna call it good. So let's go over to the machine and we'll take a look at it one last time, at least for this video of me acquiring an HP 3458. Um, it's taken, I don't know what video we're on now, 15 or more um, videos to get to a point where I actually have a working machine. And then I'll go ahead and uh, take uh, viewer comments on what they'd like to see done with it. And I have some ideas what I'd like to see done with it. And those will be future videos actually using the machine, but uh, this is the end of the series of actually making it work. All right, so the machine is now running and uh, I have calibrated it. Uh, so I can do three of the calibrations, but not the fourth calibration. And if you go online and read about it, nobody can do that fourth calibration. So the first calibration is a, a zero calibration. And the manual says to bend yourself a piece of wire, <laughs> something like this, and you put it into the, the camera. I don't know if the camera's seeing everything. Okay, over here, uh, you put that loop of wire here and you short these four terminals out. That's what this piece of wire does. And then you run a zero cal. It takes about five minutes to run the zero cal. Um, and then you need to do a, uh, a 10 volt cal. So you put in 10 volts 
and then it runs for another five, 10 minutes, then calibrates all of the 10 volt stuff. In fact, it, it calibrates every single voltage range. If you think about a calibrator, like a flute calibrator, what is it? It's one diode and then a whole bunch of transfers. There's a whole bunch of, re of precision resistors that transfers that one voltage up. And so you, you, you introduce all of those errors and then you use those errors to calibrate something. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So these guys got it right. You're gonna bring, bring in one voltage and then it will transfer it to every other voltage. So we'll take it down to 100 millivolts, 10 millivolts, like take it up to 1000 volts. It will transfer that 10 volts everywhere that, that, that the machine can do. So very smart design. So you do that and you don't have to have something that is 10.0000000. If you have 9.9996542, then when you calibrate it, you tell it that's the voltage you're inputting and then it uses that voltage. So very easy to do. Now, do I have a super, super accurate voltage source? No. Um, and I'm never gonna have a perfect cal on this thing. So what I did was I took this little box, which has a very nice precision, uh, precision uh, device in it. I warmed everything up. I took it over to a six and a half digit fluke uh, and uh, or uh, Keithley, I mean a six and a half digit Keithley and I measured it and then I typed that number in here and used that. So it's calibrated to a six and a half digit Keithley and it's eight and a half digits. So it's going to be accurate enough, so I'm in the ballpark, but what I'm interested in is the resolution, not the accuracy. I'm interested in the resolution. So I did that. You, and then you have to do it for resistance. So you get yourself a 10 ohm resistor, a 10K ohm resistor, and I made this little guy here. This is a nice 10K ohm resistor and this, the force and the sense, and you measure that on your Keithley, <laughs> and then you transfer it over here, and you say, oh, this is actually 9.9 K ohms, whatever, and then it calibrates all of the K ohms. Okay, so what's the fourth thing that I can't calibrate? That is AC. Um, the AC requires you to have an unobtainium uh, uh, AC to thermal voltage conversion box that is, no, nobody's gonna have the thing. So uh, I'm gonna talk, think about it later, but as, as we stand right now, there's no way, I, no way I can do that, no way I can do that calibration. Okay, so let me turn on my little uh, reference box here. And uh, I've got, got it the wrong way around here. Let's go plus. Um, so, a uh, two and a half volts, a five volts, a seven and a half volt, and a 10 volt. And um, they are uh, not, not great, because uh, it's a double standard chain, it's different time of day, and they've warmed up and from the time I've calibrated. So when I calibrated it, it was 9.99518, and now it's 10.004. So that has to do with a whole bunch of things, <laughs> this thing and that thing. And yeah, uh, anyway, it's calibrated good enough. Like I said, I don't care about the absolute number necessarily. I care about the relative number. Um, I probably in the future will do a more rigorous cal where I do take into account temperature and stuff, make sure everything's super, super stable. Um, and uh, on a pick, a pick, I'll pick a day where the temperature is kind of constant during the day so things won't fluctuate too much and do a better calibration. But right now, I have a working unit. I'm very, very excited. Let's check the, uh, let's check out the ohms and see how, let's see how it's still doing. Yeah, there we go, 9.97K ohms. And I think that's pretty close to what this thing was. It wasn't 10K. Uh, I don't remember what the number was when I calibrated it, but it's, it was something like that. So there you go. It's been a long journey, but I now have a machine uh, and like I said, it's going to work everywhere except for the AC. Um, then I'm going to, I'm still going to work on that maybe in the future. So stay tuned.